never thought we'd make it out. Make it out. Cause we didn't take the safer route. Safer route. Now it's ownership and bank accounts. What's the beef with that cake about? Young and black on that paper route. Paper they route. never thought we'd make it out. Hey, look. Radio, 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 it's the Richard Horror Podcast, it's your boy Much B. And the Princess of the Pie, your girl Mariah. And we in here looking like we on, uh, uh, paid in full with Dame Dash with the, with the poofy jacket and, and then the Tim's on over there. Yes, sir. But you know, this is the super, super West Coast, the Wild Wild West. <laughs> but, um, we go, we go get right into it. Uh, I ran across some the, the other day, just scrolling, 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 scrolling. Then I sent it to my boy Spider, I'm like, man, I... Uh, I don't, I don't like bullies. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. and it was, it was, it was something with O three Greedo, and uh, and Puerto Flaco. Mm-hmm. So to keep it clean, Flaco offends a lot of people. So we, we'll get that clear right there. So we ain't gonna act like he a saint. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? But the way everything was delivered, coming from uh Greedo, I was like, ah, uh, they ain't, they ain't, they ain't gangster. You know what I'm saying? Right, right, right. They ain't really Harvey Rock. You know what I'm saying? So we go hop right into it. We'll go right to the clip real quick. So uh run run that run that Alex. I'm posted this, this shit. No nigga from Cali mentioned nothing about it. Cause for one, I ain't no shit, but for two, more importantly, nobody wanna fuck with my hood. Nobody wanna play with us. Cause you don't know that because you're not from Cali. So you didn't you didn't grow up thinking the West Coast music or going away from it like I did. I never liked none of that shit besides Snoop. I thought all that shit was weak. So I grew up listening to Lil John, Lil Wayne, and all these outcasts, all these dope niggas. It wasn't because they was from the South, because this was the dope music I went to the gym. So I'm just saying this, and I'm going to keep... All right, Wingo, play, because... I'm on the podcast, but I'll slap the shit out you and any other podcaster. Rick Baby, my brother. So I ain't talking about Brick, that's my twin. But other than that, bro, and AD and all these niggas that I really vouch for and jump on their shit, oh... Just understand something. I want you to hear me saying this on a podcast. This crib shit bigger than everything. Nigga, I will slap you. I'll, I'll take all the nice shit you say, throw it away, and slap you. I'm from Greg. We pressed the line, bro. Shut the fuck up talking about me, nigga. You been trying that shit since you came, since I came home, nigga. Yeah, I see. I'm a, I'm a real mentalist, nigga. I really read books when I'm in my cell, nigga. And I'm with all the boxing and shooting. You been doing that since you, I came home because you want a bubble. If you want a bubble, Bring your dumb ass to Rolling Loud. You can come. I'll fuck with you. Stop playing with me, though. Because I'll beat the fuck out you. And if you got anybody who want to go with that, go there further than that. Ask about Greedo in these streets. Are you cut it? All right. That that was that was a 23-minute rant, so we can't play at all, right? Right. All right, but to sum it up, he he uh he made mention of, of his paperwork coming out because he had a situation to where they, uh you know, people assumed that he allegedly told you know what i mean he say he got paperwork that say otherwise but the problem come in where he say say uh all the podcasters know better not to you know report on that because you know he from grape street mm-hmm. that's the farthest from the truth me personally i wouldn't touch no uh big you david austin type situation i wouldn't touch no uh big sad playboy against the mansfield situation i wouldn't touch no uh you know, uh, him and his homies, Grape Street, Grape Street. You know what I'm saying? Because that's real, real street shit. You know, and I, I'm, I'm in it. I'm in the thick of it. I'm, I'm, I'm around every day. But mm-hmm. it feels like a wife and Luchi's type situation, Gunner, Young Thug, uh, Nipsey Hustle case or whatever high profile like that. Best believe I would, I would, I would have talked about it. Mm-hmm. Okay, for two, you from being from Grape Street don't mean nothing. That don't mean nobody want to fuck with you from because you from Grape. That mean absolutely nothing. You're the reason why people say uh, cowards join gangs. You know what I'm saying? Because you got to keep bringing up where you from. That shouldn't matter. That shouldn't even. That shouldn't even matter. It should. It should be about you. That's one. And, and one thing I could say, what I heard, I heard he said, Greedo career gonna be over in two or three months. So, I, I okay, you could take that to to the to the to the heart. You know what I mean? Because I would too. I'd be upset. You know what I mean? Yeah. To say somebody' career will be over in two or three months, so Flacco hit me and said, uh, "You know Joe Moses." And I'm like, "Yeah, that's my boy." Mm-hmm. You're like, you know what I'm saying, hit him, man. You could interview him. I'm like, All right, bet. I hate Joe. I'm like, "What's the deal?" 
are related to measures. Like Flacco said, whoop. He said, hell no. Nah. He was like, these, these ninjas need to, need to know better. You know what I said? They, he getting paid in the city we from. I'm like, what happened? So I guess he was talking about LA rap, the rap scene. I'm like, damn. Uh, Mariah just said last week she don't, she don't, you know what I'm saying? A lot of people don't rock with our music out here. You know what I mean? So it seemed like Joey took offense. I ran it back to Flacco. Flacco said, I didn't even mention Joey though, with Joe Moses. You know what I mean? I call him Joey <laughs> or whatever. So he kind of went hard. He verbally abused my boy Flacco. So we go tap in with Flacco and see what he got to say about this and, uh, you know what I'm saying, get his feedback, you know? Yeah, most definitely. And um, when I was talking about L.A. music, I just want to make it clear. I miss a lot of good artists. Like Joe Moses has timeless music, even to this day. He got some bangers. You ain't got to feel guilty. Man. YG. No, I don't feel guilty, but I have missed so many people the game. Like, it's some really good artists I forgot to throw in there. But, like, yeah, let's get back onto this Flacco topic. <laughs> All right. We need answers like the other two times. Yes, Flacco. Yo, bunches. Flacco. Yo, bro. Man, me and Mariah here. We tapping in. I tapping out. What's the deal? Man, I'm just telling, man. So I'm like, what's the word? All right. We just ran through a small piece of the, the DeGrito clip, right? Yeah. All right. And then everybody, all the reactions I, I, I ran across, they really ain't seen the part that you, what you supposed to say that offended somebody. But what I heard was, you said, Grito, career gonna be over in three months. So, um, yeah. I, I, I want you to back up a little bit and let us know what you said that that made everybody offended, including Joe Moses. Like, well, what, what did you say exactly? Yeah, right. So, okay. So, first of all, I do want to say, bro, like, um, me and Greedo, like, did top it up. And afterwards, man, like, uh, we are cool now. And we are planning on doing, like, um, I think I'm going on, like, some tour dates, right? So, right? So, we so so like we have squashed it, we have birded hatchet, you feel me? Now, um what I believe so what he told me his main issue was 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 what I said about LA rap, right? And he's not really like tripping off what of what I said about him. So what I said was when we look at the landscape of local LA rap, it's dead. But what I should have said was when we look at the state of local rap is in a bad spot and I want to do what I can do to help it elevate. Right. So that was the exact message. But in terms of Joe Moses, um, I went on academic and academic said in terms of LA rap and LA music, nobody cares about it no more. And, and, and I said, I a hundred percent agree. So I believe Joe Moses was upset about that. And the clip, right, so um, that's his issue with it. Um, and I think D.W. Flame said that he was at the Empire, I guess, meeting or a concert or, like, right? And there was a lot of people talking about me and Design and our comments on L.A. Rap being in a bad spot and being dead. So I feel like that's the main issue that people have an issue with is the statement of L.A. Rap is dead or L.A. Rap is in a bad spot. Okay, so so did you say did you say his career is gonna be over in three months? Yes, right. So look, so um, right. So look, and here's what I actually meant about that, right? So and me and him chopped it up, and and I clarified like find it right is we had lofty expectations. Now, were our expectations unfair? Maybe right, but I think even you heard us. And Ono Jumper, specifically me, saying, yo, when bro come out, he's going to be a mainstream artist. He's going to be top 10 artist in hip-hop. He's going to really, like, take that, like, Roddy Rich 2019 step, right? Now, those were our expectations, and those were what we was expecting. So he not so exceeding, so, so he's, he's, not meeting, he's not meeting your expectations? Yes, right? But the way, way right? But so, so when I say, like, it's over... In two months, I never said his career is over. I'm talking about the expectations and where, like for example, bro, like we were unfairly placing our expectations and 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 on him to say, yo, he's gonna be be 
you know, the, you know, uh, 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 top ten mainstream rapper, right? So we were placing those expectations on him. So when I say it's over, I'm talking about it's over for those expectations. But in terms of his career, bro, Greedo will always be rich. He will always have a fan base and be able to tour, do music, and live off his like two platinum hits, right? So his career will, so like and his career will never be over. I'm just talking about the expectations of when he gets out, he's gonna elevate into a top ten mainstream rapper, kind of like how Roddy Rich did it in 2019. Okay, or, or kind of like how a lot of rappers come on after uh, they come on from jail, they come on bigger than what they was before they left, like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, 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 okay. You ain't, you ain't, you ain't backpedaling, is you? No, 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 right, no, right. Cause look, cause like, bro, if you like go back and like just listen to everything I said, like about you know, like people like Wally DeSeste or Greedo or, or Kalen, bro, like, bro, like I'm the same nigga, bro. Where yo, people on Clubhouse told me I was dick riding, like, like these niggas too much. Like people at, at I'm a jumper told me. I'm dick riding too much, right? Because people thought I was heaping too much praise on them, right? So I've always had lofty expectations because I believe these people are real, like are real talented, right? Like, like look, look, right? Because look, bro, like you ain't never heard me speak on no nigga I know is trash, right? Like, right, like, right? Like you ain't never heard me speak on no nigga that. But ain't no hope for this nigga. Like this nigga is dookie. I think I right? did. I just can't call it right now. I think I did. But go ahead. Nah. No, no, no. I think nah. I did. I just can't call it right now. I've been drinking a little right? bit. Right. So, right. So, not nah, right. So I speak on the people who I have expectations for. Right. I speak on the people who I believe could really elevate with a little tweaking. So, like my main mission was to help. You feel me? Right. Right. So when I said like it's over with, I never said his career. I was just speaking about the expectations that we put on him, right? Because again, and he ain't never like like came out and say, "Yo, I'm gonna be a top ten mainstream artist," right? Like, uh, right? Okay, like, okay. So, 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 how you yeah. feel about the, the him him uh, putting the, bringing the gang part in it? Like, because I don't the grape shit ain't got nothing to do with music. But, but what, what you feel about that part? Um, right. So, yeah, right. So, one is like, I feel like, bro, that like that when it comes to opinions, when it comes to to media, that violence should never be a part of it, right? Like, we should all have a space where we could give our opinions. Now, now look, if I was out here saying, yo, Rapper X is a bitch-ass nigga, fuck that nigga, he's a hoe, his music is trash, then Rapper X has every right to come and try to kill me. Like, for example, <laughs> Song, Lil Dirk, Boosie. Yeah, feel me? I done violated those niggas, right? So if dumb niggas say violence, I understand 100%, but I ain't never really, like, spoke that way about no L.A. rap nigga, you know? Hey, man, hey, you bet not, bro. You too close to home, and then you call Lil Dirk a snitch. I don't think you should have did that, bro. Hey, hey, listen. Don't, you gonna stand on it? You hey. you, you doubling down? Listen, like the facts, I'm just saying, bro, like, if I'm told, yo, that's an animal with a beak, it's yellow, it quacks, it got flat feet, I'm going to say my hypothesis, my educated guess is that's a duck. If I'm presented with, with every fact and evidence that leads to one particular thing, I'm not going to be that nigga to say I'm going to ignore the Okay, facts, okay, right? okay, okay. It, all right, all right, all right. Is, is Wack a duck? No. He not? No, hell no. Nah. Huh? What What college you went to? Me? Yeah. Uh, NDSU. I thought you went to a German college. So you, so, so you know how to read, right? Yeah, of course. So you, so you write the paperwork? Um, I write the paperwork and... I heard back, but like I never heard her like whack name or his uh legal name. I'm gonna take you to the zoo because you don't know what a duck is. I thought, I thought I'd walk like a duck, clap like a duck. I'm, I'm gonna leave you alone on that one. No, no, I, no, I, no, I want to get you. I want to get you in trouble. No, 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 no. Wait though, right? But look though, but bro, we've been seeing the same paperwork for about a year and a half now, and nobody has been able to 
beyond a reasonable doubt link of the whack, right? So, like, it kind of crosses if it's kind of like people, like, is trying to put it on whack, but, like, there's really nothing there that links it back to whack. You feel me? It's like if you see your girl walk out of, uh, out of a nigga apartment putting her panties in her purse, you know what took place, but you didn't see the act. Same shit. No, wait though. But because my bitch guilty, I can nigga what? Sure, wait though. But like, if Wax name is nowhere in is nowhere in the paperwork, how I'm a, can we left? I'm not, no 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 no. Uh, another time, I'm just have to get you up to speed and explain how how shit go. Like you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Because you probably you're not really uh, versed in that area. And so I'm, I'm I'm gonna get you up to speed on that shit though. Wait though, um, um, are you talking about like um, paperwork with like whacking, whacking, um, um, uh, whacking Stutterbox, right? Stutterbox, Dell Dog, all that. But but I'm 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 gonna say I'm gonna, I'm I'm gonna hit you on my uh, on on the sideline and I'm gonna get you yeah. up to speed and explain better so you can get a better understanding. You know what I'm saying? I uh, hey listen, but I'll be real though, bro. Right now, bro, like when Warren start taking it down, it looks like it's cap. But it also too is this though. Now. People was upset about the Luke Cannon thing that took place in in Ono oh Jumper. So then people paid Warstar to put a hit piece out on her that 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 like got taken down. They didn't pay World Warstar. Uh, that's a, that's a whole another story too though. But they ain't they ain't on me to explain that that World Warstar. Like you gotta holler at like Do Sims or Yael or or even Big U. Like you know what I'm saying I ain't gonna speak for them. But 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 oh, but, but, but 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 yeah. Yeah, but but no, that 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 we already talked about it. Every, the the interview out that we did with uh, No Jumper right now though. I'm, you know what I'm saying? So uh, it's man, right now, um, it's man right now actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So they could they could hear how, how I feel about that 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 segment of the interview or whatever. You know what I'm saying? And, you know how that shit go. And another thing, we 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 had reacted to your uh, KKK banging thing, right? So a lot of the a lot of the uh, listeners they kind of agree with you, right? But yes. But but, all right to revisit that, right? Yeah, so you know KKK is still prominent, but they not like game bankers where we dress how we dress and you just able to identify us, right? You know, sure. K, you know KKK is in the the police departments, they in high places, they in the government, but they don't they they don't got uh game bank tats on their face and all, so you just can't tell what they are. You know what I'm saying? And, they 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 and, they and they the they, and blood also too right that's like right again though the crypt and blood also too in, in the police right no 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 but but these people you can't you can't identify you know what i'm saying they just looking like the regular pedestrian or civilian walking down the street versus the gangbanger that's sagging his pants got tats on his face or things like that so it they 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 they, they well and alive they all around us and it ain't went nowhere and they still uh doing you know what i'm saying doing wrong today but y'all you just can't tell like you know what i'm saying they a lot of listen, they, they a lot of these gatekeepers at jobs or things like that listen right so look again you I'm you know saying, you, you, you you aware of that right sure right sure but like i'm not saying that that like there are not some K members who are out here being destructive as well i'm just saying bro um for the average kid who's in the hood, who's trying to make it out, right? His immediate obstacle, and the you know, um, and the obstacle that he encounters the most is the street news. Hey, listen. Right. I, 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 who's killing? Who, who, who's going what, on? What's the question though? Um, again, who's killing us at a uh, record pace? Is other niggas, criminals and street niggas, right? So, right, right. So, like the police, the, the the police. You watch the news, right? Yeah, sure. The the, the police. You heard of Ryan Twyman? Uh, he got he got killed maybe uh, maybe two years ago, and the, and the police only got thirty days. Like they 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 in these departments and they getting away with it, but we they not wearing little white sheets over their heads no more, so you can't really identify. You know what I'm saying? You just can't be like, oh, that's one of them. They amongst us, though. So it's easy hey. It's easy for somebody to say, oh, the Crips over there, the Bloods over there, oh, they doing this, doing that. But it's not It's not being accounted for because they getting away with it and they just blending in like communions. Hey, it must be question, right? 
right? So I, right? So, uh, boom. So how many black folks do you think was killed by the police in 2023? How many I think? Yeah. Uh, I can't call it because, you know, everything don't get televised. You know that, right? When, 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 sure. when, when, when things happen to us, they don't shed light on it. So, you know well, that? Sure. But the, right? But the, but the, we have to go off the fact that we have in our possession, right? And those facts are, again, according to Statista, in 2023, there was 1,160 police-related shootings that resulted in, in death. It was about 224 of those shootings were black folks. So I'm telling you, you're telling me that police brutality is a big issue, which it is. But that's 224 deaths. Now, you can probably go to any major city that you choose, and you can find 224 deaths of black folks in those communities by itself. So I'm just saying, right, right like, if you can't acknowledge that that's a huge issue, then what about the black death that took place at the hands of street niggas, right? Because again, the immediate no, that, obstacle... that that get acknowledged too, though, and, and that's why you be trying to debunk programs like uh, developing options and stuff that Skip Thompson do. That that that's that's getting addressed. Okay, so can I say this, Flacco? Can you hear me? Yo, yeah, and, hey, go ahead, Mariah. Okay, so if if your if your argument is that. Um, you know, blacks are killing each other more than the KKK and or, you know, policemen or whatever. Why, when, you know, you have certain guests on your platform, do you instigate certain topics then? Listen, right. So look, so people say it's instigated. I'm not thinking if I instigate. I'm just asking questions based on things that are already out there. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm not hacking emails, hacking phones. Right. I'm not hacking shit that's behind the scenes. Right, it's not instigated if I'm asking about things that are already public that's a part of history, right? Like okay, example, okay, 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 yeah. okay, stop right there. I'm gonna stop you right there. Okay, so we didn't know when you got on the phone that you and O3 Greedo had a private conversation, right? So when yeah. we re brought this up, sometimes when you re bring conversations up, if we just stated our opinions, not knowing that you guys already had this conversation and that was just to be put out there in the media and it was just chopped and screwed, it would look like, you know, we're re restarting something. But here we gave you an opportunity to, to speak your piece and let us know what happened. But sometimes, in my opinion, um, like I was telling you, you know, when we sat with you, sometimes you may instigate certain topics. It may, it may have been um, discussed, maybe tweets, maybe have discussions may have happened. Things may be old. But sometimes when you bring up old topics, sometimes you're, you may be like reigniting a fire. So if that is your argument, maybe some, since you have such a big platform, what is the solution in your eyes if you're saying that, you know, blacks are killing each other more? Since a lot yeah, of people right. do watch you, you have a big platform, you have a voice. Yeah, right? Yes, right? So, right? So, and that's why I go out of my way, right? To interview people like, 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 for example, I'm interviewing Munchie B mm -hmm. because Munchie B is a podcaster and a rapper. Now, it, now, if Munchie B was not a podcaster and a rapper and Munchie B was just a gang member and I invited on a gang member just to speak on how he killed other gang members, to me, that's an issue. But I'm inviting Munchie B on because he's a rapper and a podcaster and he has an extensive history in LA media. So if I bring him on and I ask him questions about things that he put out publicly, I feel like it's up to him now to answer those questions in a manner that de that like um that that de escalating, right? Because my job as an interviewer is to ask the question, meaning it's cut and dry. I'm not adding no like fire to it, it's just cut and dry, yo, did you post this? Why? So it's up to the rapper because I look at, again, when, again, because look, because when I interview you, I'm interviewing you because you are a rapper, not because you are a street nigga, right? Mm -hmm. So if I interview you and ask you questions about things that you already put out, I feel, 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 feel like the onus now is now on them to be escalate. Because if I ask a question that's cut and dry and their answer calls, a destructive or violent response from other people, well, that's on them. That's not on me, right? Because they have every liberty to answer the question how they chose. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. 
Right, right, and right. And I exercised that that liberty. I did that when I uh, came up there. There, see, but nah, I, and I just have to tap in with you and see what you uh, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's cool that you and Greedo had chopped it up and shit. Y'all got you know what I'm saying? Yeah, bro. Also, too, man. Listen, bro. Like, I chopped it up with Kaylin yesterday too for for like an hour, right, bro? Like, um, yeah, bro. Like, like for example, bro. Like me and Kaylin kind of like, kind of like showed how all black men should handle issues, right? So somebody told Kaylin that I was disrespecting him. They lied. And so Kaylin actually said, yo, let me actually like go back and listen to what he said. And like once he heard what I said, he said, nah, bro, like bro wasn't disrespecting. Like and he was, you know, like saying all facts. So then we hopped on the phone, he took me right and chopped it up, right? Right. So like right, right. Um so like bro, I was just just like really proud, man, of how me and Kaylin handled our issues yesterday. You feel me, man? Like, somebody tried to call some issues, but bro is such a good dude. He's level-headed, bro, that he actually, like, went back and listened. We hopped on the phone and chopped it up, man, and now, bro, like, we are 100% good. So, I mean, so, like, I'm just trying to do my best, bro, right, to enhance LA media, because I'll be real with you, bro. Like, like, be real with me, bro. Who's the last LA media personality, right, that you heard a real constructive opinion from when it comes to dealing with these rappers or or, or you feel me, these, you know, uh, um, yeah, yeah. Gina. Gina. Okay, and listen, um, I got to tap back in with Gina's, uh, I think she does whole fashion, and then uh, she does, like, uh, Another show, right? Uh, I don't know about the other. I know she do uh, whole fashions, and but she she real tapped in with the with the, with the rap thing. She be putting together ciphers and like she real like you know what I'm saying. Like so, so I, 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 I say Gina though. I bet. So now tell me like, what was the last like critique that you heard her like Gina gave to uh, um, LA rapper? A critique. Uh... I can't. I can't really just call it off off, off the rip. But I, oh, but but I know well, her, 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 her her and Joe Moses had a, had a cool conversation about. You know what I'm saying? They wave and you know, who pioneered they 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 generation and things like that. You know what I'm saying? And then, and, and, and then when she interviewed Problem, Problem was kind of like why well, he he got left out that conversation. But yeah, like you know what I mean? Way so short. But again, I love Gina. Gina is my sister. But if you say, yo, when yo, when I ask you, yo, who was the last person that you seen give a real critique at at an LA rapper, their honest opinion, and you say Gina, and then I ask you, okay, what was the opinion, and you can't remember, then there's something wrong with that picture, right? No, I listen to too many interviews, man. I, I, I'm tapped in with too many different people, though. I would say Deshaun Paul, but but see, I'm saying this ain't right, Deshaun. Deshaun. Deshaun, but see, but it seemed like uh, he he great yeah. he great people would be like shock value. You know what I'm saying? Because his, his report card made noise that first time, and now this go around. It seemed like it's just like really shock value. You know what I'm saying? No, 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 no. Right. So look, like and like like personally, right, bro. I'll say me and Design are probably the two most forefront, honest, objective, unbiased LA media personalities. Right. Like, like you know why? Go ahead. Cause, cause when we give our opinion, Munchie, the whole, like, the whole scene want to kill us, right? Nah, see, man, because y'all, y'all, it's how y'all deliver it, though. If I said the same things y'all said, it wouldn't even, it wouldn't even come across that way. Mm? If I said the same thing y'all said, it wouldn't come across that way. It's how y'all, it's how y'all, you know what I'm saying? How people perceive things and how y'all deliver, deliver things. You know what I'm saying? But hold on, let me let, let me ask you a question. Who nobody want to who who nobody want to do no diss songs against or with? <laughs> who nobody want to do diss songs against or with? Yep. Who go who will come for they throw? I'm gonna be. Hey, listen, man. I don't really want to get in into politics, but I'll be real, bro. Like, there's one <laughs> nigga who you know, uh, who name I don't ever say. You feel me? Um, and you know, and like I think people can sort of like go back and try to like figure out like who name I don't say. So, go ahead. I'm listening. Not, not, listen. 
Hey, listen. Man, don't be scared, bro. Just say it. Nah, I'm not scared, feel me? Uh, it's, from, it's your homie, though. Huh. Nah, uh, uh, listen, 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 listen. Go ahead, man. I don't know. Listen, I listen, and I, I personally think that all L.A. gang rappers are tough, and they not scared of nobody. Feel me, right? Feel me, but, but there's one person who I personally won't say. He my homie? Of course. Man, hey, hey, this is the first time you acted scary. This shit crazy. Richard Hart, we brought, we made history. Nah, ooh. listen though. Nah, wait till right. So look, like, I'm not scared. Why? Because right? look, because I will give my opinion and on their music if I have to. But in terms of like the gay stuff and who is, t- listen, man, I stay out of that name particular. <laughs> when it comes to me talking, you feel me? All but, right. so, but so, when it comes to ranking his music and critiquing it, I do my job. But when it comes to speaking about him outside of music, yeah, I don't even like say like his syllables. <laughs> you funny, man. All right, man. Hey, we're going we to let you go since you're too scared to say it, man, or everything. Uh, oh. uh, 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 hey, man, listen up, man. Listen, bro. Y'all, listen, bro. Y'all right now, bro, are like, I'll say my top 10 favorite podcast, man, in LA, man. Listen, bro. Listen, bro. Like, in like two years, bro. No, fuck it, bro. In 12 months, bro, I can truly see this duo, man, being, being bro, like being massive, man. So, bro, keep pushing up. Oh, no, Thank I appreciate you. I definitely it, bro. appreciate it, Flacco. Everything. Be safe and be mindful of the words you use, please. <laughs> Not definitely, man. Peace out, man. All right. All right. He wasn't talking about the homie. He talking about me. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't want to say it or everything but but to conclude that somebody give me a give, give opinion on my music or when I'm home music Inglewood family ain't got nothing to do with it bro unless you disrespect one of us like like a, a, a dead homie a homie or or sexuality or gangster or whatever just having an opinion on some music nobody care about all that extra shit where you from that shit don't even matter on everything it really don't that's why when doing music I feel like you know, doing business that needs somehow, some way, we got to get that to be separate. I feel like LA culture was getting there at one point, and then it's you know sometimes it gets divided when you start. No, if you're a non-affiliate, and then you giving your critique on somebody, they might bully you though. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And they, if they from somewhere, they they might get that off or whatever. Mm-hmm. But you know what I'm saying? I'm, I ain't nothing towards Gracie, but ain't nobody scared of nobody because where they from. They getting like Gooch, my boy. Tiny Ed, Wani, I got homies out there over there from the Jordan Downs, but that, you know, well, you know what I'm saying? No, nobody care about where you from. Do you think that was just part because he was upset? You know, sometimes when you're upset, you just say things. And, nah, you know, that's just he coming. said it before with the, with the, uh, on back on Fig, like, hey, wouldn't nobody do nothing or say nothing to him because he from Grape Street and all that little shit or talking about the shit with Dust Old Dub, but talking about he sell clothes and leave him alone. But shit, when I met, when I became aware who Dust O Dub was back then, his name was Double O, and he was trying to bang neighborhood fifties. So he's not as innocent as he think. Greedo just met him. Greedo don't know that dude like that. You know what I'm saying? Mm. I I know who that dude is, but that's either here or there though. Ooh, that male ego is something else, man. Let's just respect each other. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah, respect. My goodness. Everything. But uh, what happened with the Grammys? What happened with the Grammys, man? So legendary Killer Mike was arrested after receiving three Grammy Awards. And this was the 66th Grammy Award show. Um, It was petty. Um, I think security was basically just overly doing their job. Um, And shout out to Killer Mike for handling it um, like a, a true gentleman. You know, he was he didn't make a scene. And for all the youngsters that don't know who Killer Mike is, I suggest y'all do y'all homework and do y'all research on him because he is very legendary in the game. Killer Mike been making music since probably before I was even born. <laughs> I don't know. Like, Killer Mike been in the game for a very long time. And, um, you know, I think I believe he'd even discovered Outkast. And um, he even got a feature on his album with um, Andre 3000. And Andre 3000 is not even really doing music. He made, like, a, a his last album was very, like, what, I forgot what they call it. Like they the, complain about it. They say you just playing an instrument the whole the instruments. Album. But yeah, I like stuff like that. Like if I'm writing or if I'm trying to get stuff done, I like so that. So was it like meditation too. music or something? Um, I wouldn't necessarily meditation, but he has that vibe. He's Andre 3000. He's in his own his own lane, so he can do that. But uh, put some respect on Killer Mike's name and definitely um, those awards were definitely 
owed to him. He he did his he did his thing. He's been in the game for a very long time. And actually, Charlamagne the God called it on the Breakfast Club. He said, "Killer Mike will be winning Album of the Year a few months back," and he, he ain't lying. Okay, so so security let him through because he had some weapons. Let him. Uh... I don't even think he even had weapons on him. I don't even think that was even the issue. I just think that I don't necessarily know what was the the um. I think it was a power trip within security. It looked like from per the video. So they so they let they, they let him slide. He accepted his uh, awards and then they tripped on him. Yeah, that's what it looks like per the videos. Um, I, don't, I haven't seen that he came out and said a statement yet, but um, probably won't. Yeah, I mean, I've never heard anything negative about Killer Mike, so it's unfortunate that that kind of got overshadowed of him receiving his awards. But that was definitely owed to him. I ain't, Most I ain't, definitely. I, I ain't even really up on Killer Mike like that in his music. I'm out to tap in. I don't, I don't really know too much about it. He produced some of the best albums too. And then he got to be old though, cause you said something about Outkast. Mhm. Mm okay, okay. I'm he don't look that old though. He's like almost fifty, but he don't look old. Like Killer Mike is a legend for sure. You will date him? That's a married man. No. Oh my goodness, no. Right, that's what, like uncle. Like no, no. That's like don't say that. No, that's like an uncle or something. Like no, I'm just saying, put, give him his respect, Munchie. No, I'm saying if he wasn't married though. He no, was I don't man. even. I wouldn't even look at him like that. Like no, my goodness, no. Valentine's Day coming up. If he hits my you like, please ignore Munchie. Absolutely not. No, no. no that's not even like in the. <laughs> No, respectfully, that is a married man. That is like an honorable man. You about man. to get a nice steak or something? No, absolutely not. Um, I just want to say, make sure that the world knows who he, this man is, and he gets the respect that is owed to him. All right, I just got put up on game with Killer Mike. I'm about to tap in with his music because I ain't, I ain't never listened to one song from him. I'm, I'm just uh, hip to the latest situation. You know the Trina album? I got it so big like the sun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I believe he produced that. Oh yeah, Trina. That, yeah, that's that's one of my babies right there. I, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, um, he produced that album. So. Oh yeah, that's one of my. You babies. probably have listened to many songs of Killer Mike and didn't even know. No, nah, for sure, behind the production. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. But you know, good thing is he's he's out. Minor little set. I don't even know if you want to call that a setback. That yeah, you're trying to embarrass him. That's, that's a hiccup. He ain't yeah, minor that. hiccup. You know, but he handled it like a grown man, and he, you know, not saying that the Grammys, um makes you you know makes it seem like oh this is now now okay, this so so whatever happened they let him slide let him collect his awards and then book him but will smith he smack chris rock go sit back down and then could get his award and go on with his life they didn't, they didn't even cuff him up right he assaulted right. them all <laughs> he, he he assaulted somebody all on camera and killer mike is a very tall dude too so you know i i'm I, i'm just shocked that that happened and it's unfortunate that happened but also but shout out to anything Huh? What does Hyde doing? I, I just I'm assuming that that may be why security was like pressing him. It was just it wasn't even like a big issue, you know. They just made it more than what it was, honestly. But again, you know, it's unfortunate. I don't know exactly from the timeline. It just it all came out in spats. But most of the videos are just showing him being arrested in the rain, and that's unfortunate because that man won three Grammys and he had a nice award. He had a nice speech that he was that was said, and a lot of us didn't even get to see that. I don't watch the Grammys personally. Oh no, they said they, they didn't televise it. Yeah, and I don't watch. spoke out about that. Yeah, I don't personally watch um, the Grammys, all the award shows, so I'm not a big fan of them. But doesn't mean that, you know, winning a Grammy doesn't make you um, complete or anything like that. But that is that's your award. You should that's that's still your flowers. You know, it doesn't matter regardless of, you know, it was owed to him. And shout out to Lil Durk too. He won a Grammy too. That that's that's really dope. He, and he says he is for the trenches. So a lot of people did win some awards, and that's pretty dope. I, I'm very proud of the people that I see win some Grammys. So. Shout out to everybody that won. All right. Speaking of violence, uh, Will Smith smack, smacking somebody, uh, him getting arrested for whatever it was, we still don't really know. Right. We still uh, don't really clearly know. Uh, uh, low dark in the trenches. Speaking of violence, in Michigan, a mother was arrested. And I'm I'm kind of confused why, though. But you, you say you kind of see why. You know what I mean? Yeah. Okay. So, um, there was a key, uh, school shooting in Michigan and a high school shooting in 2021. Um, this, I'm going to go scam through this just so I can verify how many children were shot and how many were injured. Um, I believe it was four students were killed and one was shot. Let me just make sure I'm clear on that. I just had it right here. Um, but the father, okay, so th this is the timeline of the events. Okay. So on November 26, 2021, James Kremley, uh, buys a nine millimeter from a shooting store in Oxford, Michigan. 
His son, Ethan, 15, who was a shooter at the time, posts a photo of him on his Instagram holding the semi-automatic rifle. I mean, um, handgun. And um, he posted he just got a new beauty today. Um, then on November 27th, the mother um, takes um, Ethan shooting at the shooting ring. And she writes on social media that it's a mom and son day testing out his new Christmas present. So the gun was for the son. On November 29th, a teacher sees the son, uh, Ethan, um, which was a student of Oxford High School, searching online for ammunition with his cell phone during class and reports it. Ethan tells the school staff that he and his mother recently went to a shooting range and that the shooting sports are a family hobby. The school notifies the mother, um, lets her know that he's not in trouble. So the mother says, okay, she's not mad at him. Blah, blah, blah. November 30th, Ethan opens fire at the Oxford High School, killing four students. Seven others are injured, including a teacher. His parents had met with the school officials earlier in that day because violent um, he was being violent, I guess, during the day uh, with the math. Oh, he had violent drawings on a math paper. Um, so they had to remove him from school earlier. Um, Ethan's backpack was also not searched. So there was his gun was in the backpack. So he was already showing signs of like aggression, already showing signs of him not being there. Like, you know, it was all there. And the school was well aware something wasn't right. Um, December 1st, Ethan is charged as an adult with murder and terrorism. December 3rd, 2021, James and Jennifer Crumbly are charged with involuntary manslaughter. Authorities um, couldn't find them and a uh, search is launched for them. On December 4th, um, a judge imposed a combined $1 million bond for the parents hours after the police say they were caught hiding in Detroit at an art studio with new phones and more than $6,000 in cash. They pled not guilty to the charges. So, I mean, it's a long list. It's like a whole timeline of things. As of today is current day, as of uh, January 23rd, 2024, Jennifer Cumberly stands trial on involuntary manslaughter charges in an unusual effort to pin criminal responsibility on his parents for their deaths. And that's the first time a parent would go to jail for something their kid did. That's the first time, like, in, in uh, America history. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, I'm I'm really shocked because you remember the um, other shooter he got away with it um, during um, which one? Kennesaw. Ken, I'm, I'm These not, white boys began cracking. Yeah, so. he had an AR rifle and they said he was exercising his right to kill four people. Oh my goodness, Kenosha, the Kenosha shooting. Um, I ain't up on it. You did. I cannot think of his name. Anyways, I don't want to get the two stories combined, but he got away with it too. He was a young boy and used his rifle and shot four they people him from the Black Ma Lives Matter during um, George Floyd. Um, times during the pandemic but um yeah this is crazy that they are charging the parents and to be honest with you i'm kind of like agreeing with it in a sense be, but then it, it's, i'm kind of on the fence but it's like y'all knew <laughs> like y'all almost created this monster it's like okay when our kids are not with us i understand that they may be doing things that they're not that we're not aware of but you knew you bought this boy right you knew you bought him a gun you knew he wasn't. He's posting things on Instagram. That should have that should have been sealed in a lockbox. Everything. So at some point, you are responsible. Those those parents lost their children. But the school's seen the signs too, though. So why they? Yeah, the school should them? be just as responsible too. Right. Just as responsible. The, the the family could really do a lawsuit against the because uh, they seen the signs. They seen the drawings. They the 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 behavior. The like, like that. When when do a suspension or something come in play? So is it all on the parents? Um, I I believe that all the adults failed. You know, all these children and then those poor innocent lives that were lost and that teacher that passed or was injured, you know, um, it seemed like he already had some issues there. Like he he was pretty excited. Like I, I've I've lived in the South and I've been to shooting ranges where I've seen parents take their kids and shoot rifles. They do it out here. Time. Yeah, but I'm just saying I, I it's very common. Like I've seen them and it was like, you know, them kids know how to unlock like boom, 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 boom like for real. Like them kids know how to use them rifles. Like it's, just, it's like a sport to them. So I, I could kind of see that what they were trying to say. But at the same time, you got to recognize. Like let's not be blindsided here. You you know your son was up to no good. Like why was that is that you are responsible for that child? So you should have knew that that gun should have been put up. All them guns should have been put up away from a kid. Damn, bro, we get Jordans for Christmas. He got a blick. And it was before Christmas. At that, it wasn't even Christmas. This was around Thanksgiving. 
Friendsgiving. He got a he got a gift. Yeah. Um. So to you be honest, play, uh, it's Black Friday. He got a pistol. Eighteen. To be honest, like that just goes to show you, like, um, parents, we we are responsible for, that, uh, for our our kids, regardless if they going outside and doing stuff that we have may not have taught them. Oh, but this right here, no, not did. No, I don't want to be punished for the stuff that my son does either or my daughter does. But at the same time, if their behavior patterns are there and I choose to ignore them and certain things like that, I'm I'm responsible. And I'm just being real. Like, you knew you bought that boy that gun. You knew you guys play. Uh, that's a hobby for y'all to use guns, rifles. All oh, that was that was y'all thing that those should have been securely put up. He white, right? Of course. Oh, so, OK. There you go there. Like, well, we got guns. My, our mamas don't know it. Yeah, you getting them in a different way. <laughs> like, you know, but of course. So I, I got a Blake nigga. Mama, like, put, you need to, you know what I'm saying? Don't yeah, bring that, that to my house type shit. That's why I say that parents are should be responsible, you know? Um, we got to recognize the patterns of our children. Like, um, not all, some things we're going to be blindsided by. A lot of things we're going to be blindsided by because you don't want to see your child like that. But at, in this case, you knew what the fuck was going on here. Like, y'all knew what the fuck was up. Bleep, bleep. No, I don't think they should have uh, got, but the, but but I think the mom got found guilty uh, involuntary manslaughter and the dad is up next for trial. So hopefully the dad lawyer up and, and have a better defense than the mama did. And, and you know what I'm saying? Slither out of that shit because I don't think parents should be punished for what their kids did because I know I done did a gang of BS. Okay, but we're not talking, we're not talking, listen, listen here. This boy right here was like on the internet posting his guns bragging about it being very braggadocious the parents are well aware about it he's searching ammunition at school like come on now how many school shootings are going to continue to happen like that should hell no this is a totally different case that that's a mass shooting at that point lee game bangers alone we're not talking this is not game banging we're talking about get off schedule lee game bangers alone you see us don't clutch your purse Y'all need to be worried about them people be shooting up theaters and shit, acting like they in the Batman movie and shit, and uh, Sandy Hawk Elementary type shit. They, they don't never be the black people. How many? No, there was maybe a few. Man, the DC but... sniper, and then I don't even count uh, Christopher Dorner. Christopher Dorner, he need to be celebrated on Black History Month. Like, you know what I'm saying? They don't never be the black people. Let's stay on topic here. So on this, on this one right here, that is the topic. No, it is. I'm not dis. I'm not disregarding what you're saying. For right here. In this instance, you don't think that the parents should be held somewhat responsible at all? Mm -mm. You don't think the parents should be responsible at all? No. Nah. You don't think that they could have stopped that? The school, the school, the school should have stopped it. They seen the signs. The parents purchased the weapon and allowed and allowed him free will. That's the laws in a state. They could buy it that easy. Let me tell you this: I would feel just as guilty if. Shit, like like I said, I'm not. I mean, I know all the things my children do when I'm not around, but this the signs were there, and I'll be equally as responsible. We're not talking about gang members. When it has nothing to do with gang street, none of that. We're I'm talking saying, about right okay. here. White people, they got it hung up on the wall. Their rifles on the wall, just like we got right. puppies on the shelf. That's I mean, that's just white people. Culture. They go hunting. That's yes, that, I that's, get that's white people shit. That's I get that. Do. So the parents shouldn't be responsible at all. When the, when just days before the boy was searching ammunition, and, and the mother was like, oh, "I'm not mad at you." This could have been prevented. She said she, said she wasn't mad because the school said that he not in trouble. But they, but he, the, the, the signs were there. The school should have picked up on it then. They oh. created that. That they're, they're, when you bring your seed into this world, you are responsible for that. They created not the school. Uh, the school. Don't get me wrong. The school should be just as responsible. Right. You but should've. the parents, for sure, the signs were there. Yes. Well, shit. I don't know. We gonna agree to disagree. The school should have uh, suspended them or whatever. They seen John's and, and guns and, and all that. And then he would have came back and did the same thing. You know why? Because the parents already bought him the weapon. They gave him the free will to like. It probably wouldn't have led to that if he would have got in trouble. You can't say what well, if. Ain't no hypotheticals. I'm just saying this, what the school should have did. They should have. So the parents are. It, I don't think they should go to jail for what they son did. They didn't tell them to go up to the school and shoot people. That motherfuckers knew what was up. They even they even ran away. They even took got off. Hell yeah, because they knew it was coming. If, if you hear you got a warrant, you go get little too. What's that? What's that dude? That Four did kids, high school what, students, were killed because they the purchased their child a weapon, and the signs were there that he wasn't. He shouldn't Man, have had. He was immature. As as want, so I'm just not gonna agree. I don't think. Yeah, you not. Be, go, go. I, they. I feel like they're yeah. just as responsible. Yes, because. I, I, I understand when I'm not around, my child may do some ignorant shit, but if I see some bull, he doing some bullshit, hell yeah, I'm just as responsible because I could have, if I did everything in my power to stop him, he still went, all right, I understand. But y'all had enough time to get this situated and y'all didn't. 
and now these poor innocent high school students that went to school that day, their lives are no, they're, they're not here. I hear you. You hear me, but you're not gonna agree. But I no, mean, shit, no. they should. They, I feel like they responded that that could have been stopped. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. A suspension or expulsion or something. That his ass should have went to boot camp or something. All them weapons should have been taken from that whole family. That's how I feel. Uh, I mean, it's, that's the Constitution. You got the right to bear arms, but right. But uh, and then when the wrong weapons get in the wrong hands, then what? Yes, I hear you though. Mm-hmm. But you don't feel me though. But it's okay. No, no, I hear you. It's okay. It's one of those. It's, this is one of those conversations we're not going to agree on. Uh, what we got? What's going on next? Okay. Yeah. Uh huh. Okay. So um, I ran across this clip. Um, yeah. Um, let me see. Um, so I ran across this clip, um, G Herbal had, was on a podcast and he breaks down crying. Um, unfortunately he lost one of his friends and I believe they called him little Greg. Um, I want to say shout out to the cameraman for not showing him actually crying because it was pretty sad. And, you know, he said like, if I ever win a Grammy, if I ever win an award, he's not here to celebrate it with me. And I mean, it, it was, it was pretty you know, it was pretty sad to to hear. And I just wanted to, like, once we play this clip, I I know you've experienced this. I know you've lost many people and, like, in the streets. And now you're doing something more positive in your life. Does Do you think that that ever affects you, like that Survivor's Guild or, like, things of that nature? Oh, uh, yeah. I, oh, he been, been through. I, I done been through that a couple times. A couple, hell yeah, a couple times. And not to... um. Not to get too, too deep, but, you know, sometimes people say you get so numb where you don't even, you're not even able to cry at funerals because it's you're just it just becomes a yeah, repetitive it, cycle. You become, like, desensitized. Very desensitized. All right. Um, and not saying one death hurts more than the other, but because this happens so frequently, then do you cry? Do you, like, how do you express your emotions? What are things that you do to, like... A lot of times I don't be having time to grieve. Cause you know what I'm saying? It's more anger. Nah, cause cause I, I be having to be the person. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Being being shown for other people, or, or or way back when it, it ain't it ain't it ain't got time to be doing all that crying shit. It's, it's time to handle business or something right. like that. Or you know what I'm saying? Right. Like you know what I'm saying. I don't, like a lot of times I I didn't have time to grieve, and then then so it was times I did though. But then, what well, at 34 I didn't took so many losses. I was like, it's like you know what I'm saying. Now, you are somebody who has been through a lot, like a lot, like a lot of things, you know, from, and you keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. And you are somebody that I know. Those I are can, homies, those are vision, those, you know what I'm saying? Literally. And, Freedom. Um, we're going to um, go ahead and um, play this clip and then we're going to continue our convo. Uh, we can't hear anything. On the podcast, I'm telling them stop going that barbershop. But you gotta get your hook up there for game. Make it come to you. Just a quick cut. Um, I'd rather just play the actual video of of Gerbo crying rather than this other guy talking about Gerbo crying. That wasn't the right one. Yeah, that's him. He's talking. He's saying, "My told my brother to stop going to that barbershop, okay. and he gets killed." That's Gerbo. All right. So January 28th. Yeah, what? Inglewood Barbie takes it up finally. Or she takes me yeah. telling me I'm so sorry for your loss. And when she takes me this, her brother is the barber. And I ain't never even want to speak on this on the podcast. I'm telling them stop going to that barbershop. But you got to get your hook up there for game. Make it come to you. This at the end of the day, it's but... being on point and still knowing that a n***a hurt you. I'm him and you is me. But he just not listening to me. And I know I'm not responsible, but I'm going to still feel like it's my fault because I can't live life 
If I get a Grammy or Oscar, I must think about my little brother gang. I ain't gonna lie to you. You know what I'm saying? My life can't be complete without him. I ain't gonna lie to you. It don't feel complete. It's never gonna feel complete without him. That's the truth. I ain't gonna never be able to feel complete without him, man. I ain't gonna lie to you. Man. This shit just don't make sense to me. It don't add up. You gotta understand. So you heard when he said, "I know it ain't my fault." Mm-hmm. He he felt it's his fault. Yeah. Then he felt it's his fault. He even dropped this song. It goes so crazy. He talks about um. What's you know, the name his, of it? Um um. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! We'll pick it up later. Yeah, we, it's, it's at the that? top of my head. Um, I could, I could say the lyrics. I just can't think of the song. I'm mean, I'm gonna say it before this is um. We end up talking about it, but um, hearing him cry and saying, you know, he pre-warned his brother not to go to that barbershop, you know. I'm him. You, we, we, the, we the same. Like just having that that friend, like, and then losing him, like, and hearing the hearing him, him him crying. Like a lot of men are afraid to cry or show like emotion, but it felt like at that moment he couldn't even hold it in. That's how hurt he sounded. Like, yeah, that's so that's survivor's guilt for real. So, is there has there ever been an incident in your life you just like, man, I just talked to this boy, I just told this boy don't. No, it, it, it's 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 two incidents with the, with the homie Baby Snugs and then with the homie Red Bull. With Baby Snugs, he 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 asked me to to go somewhere with him, and I declined. And then if I would have been with him, it would have went different. Mm-hmm. And then with with Red Bull, I'm kind of like, you know, we rock. Why you didn't have, you know what I'm saying? Yo 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 yo, the the necessities with you, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And and you know what I'm saying? And I'm like, you know what I'm saying? So. And then me and Red Bull be together every other day or every day. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, yeah, like, you know, I felt like shit would have went different if I was with them or if I would have even hollered at Red Bull before he left. Like, why you ain't? And then he would have took what's necessary with him or X, Y, and Z. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But, 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 yeah, no, Survivor's Guild is a real thing. You know what I'm saying? And I could tell that that's what he, that's what's going on with him. Because when he's like, I know it ain't my fault. When he said that, it, it, he felt it's his fault, though. You know what I'm saying? Hearing that, does that hit home for you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, I heard it somewhere and I don't know where it's at. Somebody sent it to me. I know, I know YG feel survivor's guilt with Slim 400. Right. I, I, I know he do. Uh, I, I know he do. Somebody sent the clip of somewhere he was talking. I don't even know what platform it was on, but I know he feel like, feel the same way though. But no, that's a real thing though. But, but yeah, I wonder how long ago uh, his boy got killed. He talking about some old or some recent. This is maybe about a year or two ago. I believe it happened in 20. I think he said the date was 2020 or 2021. So it just it just happened. Um, the song's called "Locked In" though by G Herbal. If you want to check it out, um, but it wasn't that long ago, and um, he he talks about drinking a lot ever since his brother was gone. And I don't think that's his biological brother, but you know, when you in the streets with somebody, in the trenches with somebody for so long that y'all become brothers. Like that's the blood wouldn't make it no difference. But um, when I seen that, it it made me think of you only because I'm like I could only imagine like you've gone through this so many times, and you know and having to just keep moving and keep pushing. You got to be like strong all the time. And, you know, so many people deal with that. Like it's so relatable. I, I'm even proud of the comments for not even bashing him for crying. Cause you know, people nowadays, social media takes things, they joke around, they think things is funny, but that's not nothing. That's not a laughing matter to show your vulnerability. And you, he couldn't even hide it. He couldn't even hold that in. You know, it's, I'm sure there's been so many times you just have to hold it in. Cause you feel like you got to be strong and, Crying don't make you weak. You said you gave uh the credit for flipping the camera around, not showing that, but showing that that wouldn't that would, I mean it wouldn't have been a big deal though. You know but you know, they make memes of everything, you know. Um, they make memes of everything. It wouldn't have to me it wouldn't have made a big deal, but to it wouldn't have been a big deal. This generation of kids, they they make everything funny. Niggas, niggas lose homies everywhere. Right. You know and that's so relatable across the board, across the world. Like that was a very, you know, that hurt my heart hearing him cry like that because I'm like, dang, I just think about, you know. All the people that I know that I've, I've lost, family members, things, things, things like that, to gun violence, and then just hearing, hearing that, like it's, 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 it's sad. Like this is what's going on every day, um, in everyday life. And I want to say he even named one of his um, albums like Survivors Guild, PTSD, or Survivors Remorse. I'm um, sorry, I get it mixed up. I am a G Herbal fan. I do listen to some of his music, but I I might be getting the names mixed up. But I, I definitely know that he feels that. But I. Definitely wanted to talk to you about that because I knew that was very relatable to you. Like I know you've dealt with that and may still deal with that. Hey, hell yeah! No, I done took a gang of losses. I done, I done took uh, took a whole lot. Everything that and it kind of like like you said desensitized me and shit because you be bringing up stuff to me and, and you be like, 
like you bring up something recently, I talk about it. I was like, man, shit, he just, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But you, you, but that's a that's a female thing, and you a mother on top on top of that. I've been through a lot. I'm just, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I be looking at a lot of shit like it's like small, like get over it. You know what I mean? So I think, you know. Um, I will say sometimes you make me stronger situations, like you know. Um, and I appreciate that, but sometimes I got to make you a little softer in some situations. <laughs> See, think we got. It's like we really brother and sister because we really go di- agree to disagree, but at the same time we on the same page. And you know, it's a lot of things like, um, you know, I want what's best for you, and I know you want what's best for me. You know, and things like this. The fact that I said said I thought about you when I seen that clip was like, dang, you're not really hurt me, like you know, because I know you're one of the money, one of the many people that I know that have been through a lot of things. So. For you to still be standing strong and like I tell you this all the time, like I definitely commend you for that because I don't know if I would be able to do it. I would have lost my mind. Oh yeah, no, I appreciate it. No, you gotta, you know what I'm saying, stand tall. But yeah. but but I could tell I could tell that was real close. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um it kind of reminded me of like hearing some of the stories that you shared with me even off camera about some of your friends. So it like, yeah, that's what made me think of you. I was like, Yeah, we definitely gotta talk about this, you know. Um and shout out to G Herbo, you know, for being vulnerable and letting the world see that because there's a young boy that maybe thinking about picking up a gun and pulling that trigger, you know, or vice versa. So maybe that may open somebody's eyes before taking a life or your life may be taken. Hey, man, people can't be so hard on themselves, too. It's like you right. said, you told them not to, uh, you know what I'm saying, man, stop going to that barbershop. But, you know, like, you know, that might be the hangout spot or, you know what I'm saying, like, man, tell them to come to you. So he had the luxury mm-hmm. of having a barber come to him and take advantage of it, though. You know what I'm saying? So you can't be hard and try not to be so hard on yourself when it, when it be instances like that you know what i'm saying yeah and grief can make you angry too that's probably it sounded like he was a little angry, like oh i told you not to you know those, those instances like mm-hmm. you know you tell somebody not to do something like you know my grandmother lost my uncle she said they they had a they she's like i'm t- she's telling him like dragging in the house don't go to this party she's telling him my mother feels that you feel that through your womb that mess hurt when something's wrong not right with your baby she said she felt it she shook him do not go and he just wouldn't listen yeah no nah, because i was sad but mad at Tommy red bull because how we rock we stay dangerous you know what I'm saying? Right. Like I, it ain't a good thing. But I, I, I got like maybe eight, eight gun cases. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like some throughout some. I did time for or whatever, whatever. But like you rather protect yourself, and then you know what I'm saying? Right. So I'm like, damn, bro, you know better. Like you know what I'm saying? It's 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 a sad situation all around the board. But you know, with this, this is remember um, last week we had talked about honoring. You know, our fallen soldiers, like, this is the way you honor him. Like, you bring his name up and you talk every every now and then talk about a good story, you know? And that's how we keep his name alive in a positive light. Oh, yeah, that first interview, well, probably the first interview, but the first interview I ever did in my life with well, well, Alex Alonzo, I brought baby dot and Red Bull with me. Right. And they share that clip everywhere, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. When, when, they, when they reference uh, Red Bull, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, definitely. And um, let it hum. I've heard some good stories about him, you know, even meeting his father. So it's, it's, you know, it's always good. That's how you honor him. That's how you honor him in a good light and you keep his name alive. So long live Rebel, even though I didn't get to meet him. You know, his dad loved me some Mr. Craig. I mm-hmm. think everybody loved Mr. Craig. Shout out Craig. <laughs> Great um, before we get up out of here, you know, speaking of, we got to pray for our people. What's going on with T.D. Jakes? Because he is always in the news, Mr. Swallowed. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, or I know his game ain't politics. I know his politics and government. I know, I didn't know pastors and preachers be politicking like that. It's politics and everything. Oh my goodness. Like you can't get away from it. They got the Gino, Gino Jennings, Jennings pastor. And I guess he like a bold dude. Like he outspoken. You know what I mean? Right. He condemned, uh, 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 what's, what's, uh, what's Medea? What's his name? Uh, um, 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 Tyler Perry. Oh, uh, he called the man a cross dresser. How could you be a a Christian? He talking about uh, T D Jakes at Diddy parties and twerk parties. Uh, he and, and the pastor's trying to holler at him. They like even had a little meeting. And he ain't going for it. You feel me? <laughs> he like man, I don't want to talk. <laughs> Why? Y'all ain't about to get no cock. Nah, Gino tripping. Oh man, um, I believe we got a clip for that. We go ahead and run that. I'm gonna convince you or nobody. I know who I am. I came to hear the master say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Gino Jennings is a bold preacher known for his straightforward and unapologetic approach to delivering his messages. He's often praised for his fearlessness in addressing controversial topics and expressing the views of the scriptures without hesitation. 
Jennings is recognized for telling it like it is, as he doesn't shy away from discussing challenging subjects whenever he is teaching. His bold and direct communication style has garnered both supporters and critics, but it undeniably sets him apart in the realm of religious discourse. During one of his live broadcasts, he publicly criticized T.D. Jakes for associating with Diddy and attending his parties. T.D. Jakes was hanging out at a rapper and twerking party what? that Puff Daddy held. He's sitting right there, O.T.D. Snakes. Hey, amen. They there twerking and everything. T.D. Snakes right there. <laughs> God, I am not laughing at these people. <laughs> You see, they want the world to look at them as men of God, but they are really scared to be real men of God as a result of repercussions. All right, you can kill it. That's right. He called them TD snakes. <laughs> hey, all right. So the first, <sighs> dude, you, you you saw that's that's TD Jakes. He, right. he, he, you know, somehow he ain't defending a lie. He, he hear that, you know what I'm saying? You heard the narration? It did. There go the boy Gino. Gino calling it like it is. You feel me? At the end of the day, what's the said He said he had twerking parties with Diddy. What? I'm not going to lie. I, if I was in that church, I would have fell out my chair. And I know the aunties in the front row was laughing. They bust off. I ain't going to lie. Now, I don't TD, know where Gino, where Gino from. I want to go to his know. church, though. I want to. Hey, <laughs> hey, he ignorant like me. On Eaglewood, I want to yeah. go to his shit. Uh, yeah, I'm sure you would love that. He's very, he, would, he said twerking parties. Okay, first of all, at the end of the day, we are all here for the truth. It is one God. I believe in one God and one God only. Okay, but these pastors going at it is, that's a different time. Pastors is beefing. <laughs> this is crazy. He called them TD snakes. They beefing. That is not godly work. And the pastor's trying to call a meeting on him and he ain't going. Oh, he said, he said, he said, y'all just want clout off me or something. <laughs> and he has a big, uh, Mr. Jennings has a big church too. It's now don't get me wrong. T.D. Jakes has help. I've, I will listen. Like I said, I will listen to, I will read the Quran. I will listen to, uh, you know, a sermon by the, by T.D. Jakes. I will listen to when I need God's word. You feel me? Like wherever I felt compelled, I will listen to. And T.D. Jakes has helped me through some dark times. I've listened to some of the things he have said before all the allegations have came out. But so when you are, you ain't gonna listen now to the allegations. No, 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 no. There's old ones I may listen to, but uh, like if it's we're talking about God here. If I could get God's word through that, that don't mean what you doing in your private life. Uh, let me just say this: I'm I'm just hearing God's word. I'm not listening to. I'm not worried about what you was doing at Diddy's part. I just <laughs> God use your voice as a vessel to get through my ear so I can hear the word. That's all I'm saying. I didn't. I don't want to know anything else <laughs> past that. Like I, I I hate to even get into the religious topics because you know how that go. But yeah. Uh, these pastors ain't playing. He called him a snake. He called him out. Titty snakes. Hey, 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 hey. Uh, <laughs> hey, no, that's funny. Hey, but but he Titty Titty Jake's got a show on Revolt. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So that's the uh, the connection. That's the connection. You know what I'm saying? Right. And they be hanging, and I believe he do party with Diddy and shit. But uh, to put the homosexual thing on him and the twerking parties, I don't know, man. That's that's. <sighs> You know, I... It's all alleged. It's alleged. And, you know, I'm going to just say a prayer for these pastors because this is crazy. Like, this is crazy. You know, um, wow. I don't man, even know. Jakes, if that, I mean, just living your truth. God say, come as you are. You yes. feel me? Yes, sir. He so, sure did. You know, don't trip off Gino. You know what I mean? And I don't know if this against God's way, but y'all catch a fade. Um... I for real, I don't. That, that, that's your running. I don't think isn't doesn't it say in the Bible, if I'm not mistaken, about not turning the other cheek? Not turning or turning the other cheek. I can't remember. Man, and they gonna call me an idiot for this. Man, <laughs> I can't remember. I think Titty Jakes and Gino Genie should run a fade. You know what I'm saying? And I don't quote me. I, I don't. I don't read the your, actual Bible, so don't quote me on anything, please. Don't. I don't read the actual Bible. In my world, they be say they they be disrespecting my whooping. He disrespecting your uh, Christianity, Christianity. You know what I'm trying to say. I, uh, um, Christianity. I believe that, that they could, they should be able to sit and have words like men. You know, don't want to talk. Oh, you say he ain't hollering, so that means he want to fight. But what are they fighting for? Because he disrespecting his Christ Christianity. Disrespecting that. I mean, this is see. At the end of the day, this is. Let me just say this: We are all looking for the same answer, the truth. 
God. There's one God. We serve one God. If you worship and pray and you have your following and this is how you want to preach the word and this is how, because you could read a book and I could read a book and we may break it down differently. I we like, may see it differently. I do know. Why fight over like. You know, I want to, I want to pull up at your church, wherever it's at, but, but I go to hood days and I attend twerk parties. You feel me? But, <laughs> but God say, come as you are though. I like, I like, I like women that, that got a gang of little wagon on them. But you know, and then I'm a. I'm you are a, human. You I'm are. A, you are human. I'm in transition. You are you know human. I mean? You are in transition to do better. Myself. Yes, but you are still human. So it's. Hell yeah. That's understandable. You think that these pastors don't look at girls with wagons? Gino act like he talking about twerk parties. But you ain't gonna have no bachelor party. You about to get married? Man, there's oh. nobody perfect. You know. Um, you better stop playing. The objective is to do the right thing. You know, we're supposed to be doing the right thing and live in god's god's truth and but we are in the we are in a demonic world so i'm not I saying know. i'm not saying go do something crazy then go to be like god please forgive me and then go do something crazy and say god please forgive me i'm not saying that before we get up out of here i got a I got a hunger out of camera view named diamond they got a gang of gang of she thicker than the hood day and i bet you gino yeah i bet you yeah, yeah you'll put the bible down in oh my goodness mm -hmm. at the end of the day we are looking for the truth and the light and God is of everything, and I praise him. That's Je all I know. Jehovah thickness. <laughs> For real. You better stop playing grown folks. Oh, my goodness. You be coming up with some crazy oh, stuff. For real. Man, I'm a shit. Oh, my goodness. Uh, but, yes, uh, this was Rich at Heart. Uh, this was a really deep episode, you know? A bunch of different emotions flew through here. Me and Munchie had a little uh, debate here, but it's all love. I send my condolences to G Herbo. Yes, most you know definitely. What I'm saying we gonna pray for a a a a Flacco that he don't offend nobody else. You know what I mean? I'm praying for that mouthpiece, Flacco. And, and, and Joe Moses, bro, man, forgive him, bro. He didn't mean it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, shout out to Joe Moses. JM, huh? On everything. Oh, and right here, these are my books. Um, I'm gonna start bringing them just so y'all know. I am a two times published author. I might be working on something, 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 something. Mm -hmm. We might be working on something, something, something. You never know, but just so you know, my work is right here. You see my name down there. Mm -hmm. And everybody tap tap in with that uh that new no jumper interview with me Mariah Hayes on there. You know what I'm saying? Run that shit up and shit. You know what I mean? Yes. Um. Go ahead and give out your handles, Munchie. Everybody log in and everybody tap in on tap out on X thread Instagram MB underscore the mayor. That's MB underscore T H A mayor. And my YouTube channel Munchie B three four zero zero. Go ahead. Uh, make sure y'all follow my YouTube channel, uh, Mariah Sharice, and my Instagram at underscore Mariah with four H's underscore. Um, check out for some new content. And like I said, we may be having something in the works coming soon. You never know. And uh, be on the lookout for the uh, audio to come out every week. Apple, iHeart, Google, Spotify. I'm not missing anything this time, right? That's all of them. Oh, that's all of them. All right. Tap in, don't tap out. Richard Podcast, B-Team.